There are exceptions to this rule, of course, but doors and windows in Vectorworks are normally inserted into a wall object. You'll have your wall object, and then you'll have your door. We'll focus a little more on doors in this one, but the door and window insertion works identically. If you understand one, you understand the other, pretty much. Uh, when you select the door object, you'll see that if I have a door that is inserted into a wall, the object info palette will report door in wall. If I just have a door on its own, it will simply say door in the object info palette. That's how you know the difference. Generally, you'll want them inserted into a wall for a regular building. Now, as a note, you can insert doors into walls in 3D. It is totally possible. We'll zoom in on this section here. If I go and pick the door tool, you'll see it highlight in red, and we'll talk about that a little more in a second. You can go ahead and just insert a door in 3D, but generally what you'll want to do is go into a top plan view. You'll normally want to look at top plan when you're doing door insertion. You have a lot more control over it that way. Another thing about that highlighting we just saw, when you have the door or the window tool selected and active, so you have a door that you're about to place, you'll see there's different highlighting, and you'll see the door orient itself. It's not the same orange highlighting, it's a little pinker, a little redder. If you hover over normal objects, you won't get that highlighting. You'll only get it over objects like walls that you're able to insert a door into. They'll highlight this way and it'll show the orientation. The first click of a door, just to go very quickly over the basics. The first click sets where you're going to orient it. Then, if you don't click again and you move your cursor, you'll see that the door's orientation will flip around after you move the cursor basically up, down, left, and right from the place you click to insert the door. This one we inserted at the center mode, so it's going to focus on the middle of the door. The second click will confirm that. If you want to change that after the fact, you can simply click flip with the object info palette, and it'll change the orientation. You can always change it after the fact. It's just a quick way of giving it to you while you have the door active. If you don't want to bother with that and the door, the orientation is fine this way, just double click when you insert the door, and it'll place right like that. We'll undo these two, and then we'll go over these simple modes. Now, over here, the third set of modes are the alignment modes. So for instance, if I go to alignment center, it'll align to the center of the door object. But if I know that I want to align the left of the door, for instance, to this midpoint of this wall, I can simply click this mode, and you'll see it's offset to the right. If I use the next one, it's of course offset to the left. Now, this is very important here. This second mode is the wall insertion mode. If you disable this when you have the wall tool selected, it will not insert into any walls. Generally, you always want to leave this on unless you're constructing something very unusual, like a stack of windows or a stack of doors for some sort of partition wall. Generally, you want to leave this on all the time. Now, another important note. I'm able to insert this door here. If I go to the selection tool, there's another aspect of door and window insertion that's controlled here. This same mode, the door insertion mode, wall, I'm sorry, wall insertion mode, is listed here for the selection tool. If I try to grab this door and pull it out of the wall, I'm not going to be able to pull that door out unless that mode is on. I can move it in the wall, it'll let me snap to it, but it's sort of a safety mode that won't, see I can't even pull it past the end of the wall here. It's sort of a safety mode that won't let you remove objects from walls. If you want to be able to remove objects from walls or add them back into walls with the selection tool, click and drag to grab this out, and I can click and drag to drag this back in. If I drag it out, and again, if I have this mode turned off, I'm not able to drag this back into the wall. I can drag it on top of it, but it'll just sit there. You see, it won't separate the wall. So you want to make sure you keep aware of this mode. This will appear in both the window and door insertion, as well as the selection tool and symbol insertion. Pretty much anything that inserts into walls will have this mode. Now, another aspect of insertion that a lot of people will miss, uh, if you go to the door tool or the window tool, this is the standard mode, standard insertion, which basically means where I click is where it's going to insert based on this specified offset or this point. If I know I want a certain distance, for instance, for instance, I know I want this wall, not this door, not necessarily to be inserted in the middle of this wall. I want it to be one or two units to the left of this corner here. I can change it to offset insertion mode, and you'll see the door will not appear. A little preview of the door. Click right here at the end point and then I can specify my value. So go ahead and put in three. You can see that goes to the middle. Put in four, and that goes from that point. Now, it'll insert into the wall pretty much wherever I decide to place. I can just press tab, and then either click or press enter, and then click again, and then I'll set my orientation after that. So this door will be exactly that offset from this end. Now, you can change this. This menu will come up afterwards, and you can change this. So I can set this back to one, click OK, and that'll be the default. So instead of just doing one, I can click here, click here again, set it, and then change my orientation after the fact. If 
from where the first point was that I clicked. That just gives you yet another option. You can always grab them after the fact and then move them to wherever you want, but it's a little harder to grab this and see, oh, okay, now I need to measure exactly this length from where it was and where it's going to. When you grab an already inserted window, however, or already inserted window or door, and you go to move it, do you see this length value? That's the distance from where the object originally was inserted, so two meters this way or one meter back this way. Now, once your door is already inserted, there's a few different things you can do with it that will keep uh, duplicates and other things of it inserted. This is just a few more advanced tricks I wanted to show you. You can actually just select a door that's in a wall and go to Edit, Duplicate Array. It's going to assume that your array direction is the wall itself, and currently it's going to duplicate things to the left. We want to duplicate them to the right, and for instance, we want three duplications and maybe just a little bit of a separation between the duplicates. It'll duplicate them within our wall. I did this too small. Give you a better example. Duplicate array. It'll keep the settings, but it won't keep the direction. Just put one between each of these. And we can duplicate it along that way. And it'll still insert these objects along the wall. If we had a curved wall, it would show a curved path and it'll show you which direction you want to do the insertion in. This isn't very common, but again, if you just have to do a large number of them, more commonly with windows, that's an easy, fast way of doing it for objects that you already got inserted into a wall.